In this video, we're gonna take a look at five tips for Substance Painter in five minutes. Let's take a look. You can create UVs in Substance Painter by clicking the Auto Unwrap button. However, you can repack your existing UVs to get a maximum texel density. Here's a quick look at what my UVs look like currently. Under Options, set the seams and UV island settings to generate only missing data and set the packing to recompute all. Set the margin size to small and the UV orientation to rotate freely or keep original. With that set, I'll click OK and let Substance Painter repack my UVs. Here my UVs have been repacked and I have a maximum texel density. I use this technique often when I don't want to jump back to my 3D program or I've received a mesh I didn't UV myself. An added bonus, I can create UV tiles as well. Click Use UV Tile Workflow and Auto Unwrap using the same settings as before, and now I can set the number of UV tiles. Substance Painter will repack my UVs onto four UV tiles. The samples per pixel in the shader settings has a direct impact over how you visually set the values for your roughness. With a very low setting, the shader is using a small range of the grayscale values in your roughness map, which results in a much rougher look in the viewport than the roughness map is actually producing. Setting this to a higher setting uses more value range in the roughness map and thus produces a more accurate rendering of the roughness, as you can see here when I switch from a very low to a very high setting. You want to make sure you are always using a high value. I usually keep this set to 128 samples per pixel to avoid any discrepancies between what I'm seeing in Painter's viewport versus another application like Unreal Engine or a renderer like Redshift. Now I'm reworking my roughness value so that the range is accurately displayed at this higher value and thus avoid any surprises when I export to other applications. To import a texture, I can drag it from anywhere on my computer directly here into the 3D view within Substance Painter. I let go of my mouse and a pop-up appears and allows me to choose any channel that I want to apply this texture. In my case, I'm going to choose Mask. And here you can see that a fill layer is created with a layer mask and then the fill with the texture imported. Now I can grab hold of the Transform tool and I can scale, rotate, and reposition the texture where I need it to be placed here on the 3D model. By dragging and dropping the texture onto the 3D model, you'll notice here that the fill projection settings is set to warp projection, which allows me to easily place this texture on the 3D object. You can also just drag and drop the texture right onto the layer stack itself. So once I do that, you get the same pop-up. So here, if I choose mask, I can see that I have my fill, I have my mask. However, dragging to the layer will automatically set the projection to UV. And sometimes that's what you want versus the warp projection. You can also drag a texture, generator, or filter from the library directly to a layer, apply it as a layer mask, a fill is created, applying the texture. Here I'm adding a layer that contains height and normal information on top of this plastic weave. I can see that the details from the plastic weave are blending with this height and normal information. I don't want this, so what I would do is select the layer, and I can come over here to the view mode dropdown, choose the normal channel and set its blending mode to normal. But this is not working because the layer is part of a layer folder group. So what I need to do is actually set the blending mode for the folder, which will then cover any layers that are within it. So in my case here, I'll set this to normal and you can see that fixed the blending issue. A quicker way to fix this would be to copy the current blending mode to all channels. In my case here, I'm looking at the blending mode for the base color. I'm never gonna change this from normal, so I can right click on the layer, go to blending options, and choose to apply blending mode to all channels, and that will take care of all of the channels, both normal and height at the same time. I can use Substance Painter to fix artifacts here in my baked normal map. To do this, I'll jump over to the texture set settings. I wanna make sure normal mixing is set to replace. This allows me to replace the normal map using the layer stack. I'll create a fill layer, with the normal channel selected. I'll do a quick search here in my project to include my normal map. Next, I add a layer that's paintable. I'll use the view mode to select normal and set its blending mode here to pass through. This brings the normal information from the layers below up into this layer that is paintable. Now I will select the clone tool and then click the viewport dropdown to select the normal channel. Hold down the V key to sample an area and now I can clone the vector data to remove this artifact. And there we have five Substance Painter tips in five minutes. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.